Hello and welcome back to Switched On and today we're going to have a quick look at the newly released Civilization 6 on the Nintendo Switch. I've been waiting a long time for this game to come out and it's the first console release uh, of this massive game so it's quite a nice exclusive for the Switch and just wanted to have a quick run through and just show you some of the things in it. I had a couple of hours on it already so what I'm probably going to do is just take you through some of the options, just show you how it runs play through some turns let's hopefully give you a better idea what it's like on the switch and if it's going to be a game for you so without further ado let's dive straight in right so the first thing we're going to look at is the options so a lot of people have been asking is this going to be the full game and it definitely is the full experience the only thing it's really lacking is the latest expansion rise and fall and any online multiplayer but it does have local multiplayer so you can see the multiplayer option now and the option to start a local network game it's also got option for downloadable content and you can see here it comes with a load of content already pre-installed so you've got Australia, Aztec, Persia, Macedonia, Poland, Vikings, and then some extra scenarios. There is a rumour that Rise and Fall will be coming. It's been earmarked for the iPad version. We should say the iOS version now as it's on the phones as well. But Rise and Fall should be coming to that. So hopefully it'll be coming to the Switch not too long after. But let's get into a game. So single player and let's have a look at the create game options. It's what a lot of people have been asking about, so different rule sets here, like in the PC version that you can play through. Leader. So you've got all the leaders. So a huge amount of selection there. And obviously they all play it very differently. One thing you might notice straight away is the UI is quite large. So you look at the text on the screen, it's large. I think they've obviously done this to help primarily with the TV play because sort of sitting a distance from the telly, you're going to need to read that text. And it, it does take a little while getting used to because it, it just looks huge when you compare it to iOS and PC. But I don't know, hopefully you get used to it and it will become a good thing. So we'll keep it on random leader all the difficulties so as the PC there keep it on prints <coughs> game speed map types again question that's been asked again same as a PC all here so keep it on continents and all the map sizes tiny not too huge so just for now we'll keep it on time. Oh there's an advanced setup as well. With, again, far more options that you can dig into. Incredible amount of customization that you can have. So we'll stay with this. I oh, don't really want to be Alexander. We'll keep it on random. And plus button starts game, so let's dive in. Listen to the Calming voice of Sean Bean. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. The great wave of Buddhism follows you, Shikana of Japan, Hojo Tokimu. Your people truly understand what it is to practice balance, and even your finest samurai will be well learned and spiritually apt. Be strong, embrace the divine wind, and you will reach enlightenment. There you go, thanks Sean. I see load times are a little bit longer, certainly longer than PC, a little bit longer than iOS, it's ready to begin now, but it's a little bit longer. So let's have a look, so straight away, 
agree with that familiar map. Let's have a talk a bit about the controls because that's one thing that people have been asking about. So you can see there you've got the L button, top left, and that brings up your map options. Now the first thing, it, it does pop up a bit later in the tutorial, but the first thing you might notice is there's no tooltips and it's just icons. And I was a bit worried that they hadn't put tooltips in, but as I say, a little a little while into the tutorial sort of um, pop-ups, they do explain to you that you press the minus button to get your tip, uh, tool tips to pop up. So you can see there you've got your tech tree, civics, great people, and then your map options here, pins, lenses, and it's a hide and show the mini map in the bottom left hand corner. And then L slides that way. And then the other side, R, slides in the menu there with your scores. So you've got world rankings, a bit about the leaders, reports, and then your Civipedia down the bottom there, which works just like the PC. Again, I mean, look at the size of that size of the menu and the UI there, it's huge, but you know, it's for the greater good. It's, it is, I should say, really easy to read from the TV. I'm sitting about 10 feet from my TV and it reads perfectly, so it's all good. So that's the two main option bars. You've got your right stick, lets you pan around the map. Clicking in on the stick will center the cursor on the screen. So you can see there, wherever the center of the screen is, clicking in the right stick will center that there. ZR, ZL, zoom in and out, nice and smooth there. Going in little increments. If we get close as we can, they see graphics are animated. I'm not sure they were on the iOS to start with. I think they might have been static, sort of not real any, any animations, but got the nice animations there. Look a little bit fuzzy, but it's not a problem, especially if you zoomed out a lot of the time. And you see on the bottom right corner, there you can press X, and that's to do your actions. So pressing X there brings up your panel for what what piece you've currently got highlighted. Then clicking left stick on the on that sort of panel pop up lets you rotate through your different units and then left and right on the D pad lets you cycle through any options and there's your expanded options to delete units and things like that. So Let's have a quick look. You see it runs nice and smoothly so far. Not been too fine to it, been about 100 turns in on my other save and it is running smoothly, so I don't think it's gonna be a, too much of a problem. I've heard reports that people have got quite far into into the game and it still runs smooth and, and quick, so that's that's really good and a good positive. So with the tool tips there, you can see I've got the tool tip on the settler and you can press the minus button at any time. Show and hide those tool tips. So let's probably just settle and get through a few turns. So, Kyoto. You can see the excellent music kicks in now. So, what have we got? We've got bananas, and some wheat, plenty of wheat around, and some wine up there. So maybe heading towards irrigation to get that. And some tea. Of course, be in China or Japan. Right. Let's get this warrior moving. You see the X prompt in the bottom corner is now asking for production. And tall tips start popping up. Let's get a scout going early. You're going to see the panel there. Huge text, as we keep saying. And these are all the options. So you can look at your production, your workers. resources and tiles and then your city report. 
So X, and let's choose a tech. Not really thinking too much about this. Just go with animal husbandry. And then X you see in the bottom corner is turned to the next turn. So I click that while other players are taking a turn. Some horses. Ah, barbarian scout. Now then. Go there, see if we can scare him off. Let's have none of it. So here's the combat overview. It's activated rather than sort of when your mouse over, but when you click on to do the combat initially, you get the pop-up screen. So you can see major victory there. You can cancel out of that. Do something else. Or A to confirm. Then my other save, I'm getting absolutely hammered by a barbarian, so you really have to take these scouts out as soon as possible. Didn't manage it that turn. But we've got something new popped up now on the right hand side. See the notification bar? So it's prompting Y to open that. And it's just telling you about the barbarians. You have a list on here soon of all the different notifications, but you can just press X any on any of them just to trash them, as you see there. So we get rid of that. And next turn. Scouts run off. What we don't want is to let him get back to his camp and squeal like a pig about the great city of Kyoto. Barbarian camp now. So we've got to hope that there isn't another one that way. I'm probably going to have to go and take this camp out. Well, minor defeat. Let's just do it. wasn't that smart but we're probably in trouble here early again so another little thing to look at on the city screen here again using the d-pad you go down to the bottom and you can do your focus resources across the bottom there so you're going to focus on food and production or not and then toggle it off so just simple toggles so yeah, hopefully you can see the UI. Again, keep labouring the point, but it's really chunky. It takes some getting used to. I think it's a decision that's worth it. Not tried it handheld yet, but uh, I imagine it would look okay. But so, sitting sort of 10 foot from a 15 inch TV, it looks okay. Everything's easy to read. It's probably actually my, my biggest worry before the game launched was Am I going to be squinting at the screen? And there's certainly none of that. Everything's very readable, so they've taken that into consideration. Let's see if we can weaken this camp a bit more. I've got one little warrior left. He's not going to be able to take that camp out. In the meantime, this scout's getting a good sniff round Kyoto. There's not much we can do about it. So, retreat him for now, not worth 
losing him altogether. Let's try and get another unit built for that. Meanwhile, this scout's still having a time of his life over there. I must say I'm not an, ad uh, an advanced civilization player, so if I'm doing anything wrong strategically, it probably wouldn't surprise me. Mm, we're going to have a unit producing our city soon, so let's just stay here and heal up. As you can see, turns are pretty snappy, certainly early turns here. No problem at all. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. Thanks, Sean. So yeah, early turns here play it pretty quickly, so you're gonna be getting through at least the early to mid game with no problems other than the thought. Got our scout made. Going. Recommendation there for a settler. That's what the little icon on the right means. The little head. If you haven't played Civilization before, that's sort of the the best recommendation that the AI has given you. Don't have to go with it, of course. Oh, one of the little things you should mention here for for people that know how to play Civilization is that the uh, unit buying is all done on this screen as well. So you bring it to production, and you see on the panel on the right, a little bit of information about the unit, how many turns it is to build, but also there you see with the L button, how much in gold it's going to cost to just produce one out of thin air. And we can't afford any of them at the moment. So just play for a couple more turns, and I think we'll call it a day. Won't build a monument yet. We will go for. Probably have to take another warrior because that warrior is not going to last, I don't think. I wonder if there is another camp up to the uh, northeast there. Seems to be where that scout keeps retreating to. Send our scout over that way, have a little look. We certainly know there's a camp down here. And they're starting to send out some barbarians now. Which isn't good news. It's there, isn't it? Scout for your scout action. Try and get rid of that scout. Oh, come on. Letting the whole Emperor of Japan down. Okay, well, I think we're going to leave it there. We've had a quick look at everything. Hopefully, that will give you a better idea of what you're heading in for if you're considering civilization and just wondered how it runs. Just one more thing, just the start menu. Just thought give you all the controls. If you want to pause that and have a look through, just to get a better idea of how everything works. So that's the main gameplay controls. Controls for the menus. And then you see the options on the right there. The, the one thing that is quite interesting is under the save game, you've got this option of cloud saving. It says you have to be signed into uh, My2K and have the latest update available to access cloud saves. Now there is an option on the home screen to sign into 2K, but it says it's offline at the moment. And I don't know if that's going to be enabled today with the servers going live. Perhaps I don't know what that option is about. If it's got cloud saving, just literally to to save your save your saves off to the cloud, a bit like the Nintendo cloud saving then that's one thing, but 
if you're saving it up to 2k maybe there is going to be an option to continue your save on an iPad or PC or Mac which would be really interesting so I'm going to try and find out some more information about that today maybe put it in the comments if I can find anything but so I'll wrap that up for now thanks a lot for watching and subscribe if you uh, if you want to so we're going to be producing some more switch content got some reviews up on the site and currently running through a, a series on FIFA on a career mode kind of episode or two every week of that and yeah subscribe leave a comment below about civilization and obviously it goes without saying I definitely recommend picking this up I'm a big fan of the game and really happy with how it runs on the switch so got no reservations about recommending it if you want a, a really deep strategy game that you can put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours into then uh, this is probably one for you but yeah have a good weekend and enjoy gaming see you later